Hey, folks, how are you today? Thank you for joining in with us. We hope you're being blessed by the truth from God's Word. And by the way, let me give a shout out to my family at Angola and also at LCIW. So let's open the scripture today. We're found today in Genesis 42, verses 6 through 9. Listen to what it says. Since Joseph was governor of all of Egypt and in charge of selling grain to all the people, it was to him that his brothers came. When they arrived, they bowed before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph recognized his brothers instantly, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where are you from, he demanded. From the land of Canaan, they replied. We've come to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. And he remembered the dreams he'd had about them many years before. Here's some great observations from God's word. Joseph had been placed in the second command of all of Egypt. He'd been collecting and, and saving up grain because God had showed him that there would be famine for many years. And the famine had spread out all across to many nations. And Egypt was the only place that had food. So Jacob sends 10 of his sons to collect food from Egypt, but he held back the youngest son, Benjamin. I love the scripture because it tells us the truth. The Bible says, it was to Joseph that his brothers came. Here's something I never understood. They followed the exact same road that the Midianites had drugged Joseph to be a slave. And they did not see what God was intending. They had no insight into what God was planning. But they were going to be humbled. In fact, they were going to put their face on the floor as they knelt before this mighty man in Egypt not even realizing it was the brother that God had placed there. You see, here's the thing we know. God always keeps his promises. So it's been 20 years since God had spoken to him. And they didn't understand it, that they were there actually fulfilling the prophecy that God had given to the younger brother. So some people have speculated he expect to see his family again. I don't know, but maybe he had kept that word in his heart, and he knew what God had promised. But when they came to buy grain, remember the scripture says they didn't recognize him. It's hard to comprehend sometimes the emotions that maybe that Joseph was feeling. Was he overwhelmed with anger, resentment? Was there some kind of sense of rejection? I don't know. The Bible does say that he speaks roughly to his brothers. But I want to point out, I don't think it was out of pain. But I think it was to prove them to see if there'd been any growth in their life. Now, he hadn't seen them in 20 years. And he had a sense of what might be best for them. He knew them to be hard men. They had massacred an entire village. And out of envy, sold their own brother to be a slave. It was necessary to test them and to see if they had made any movement towards God. For when God's people become calloused, in their heart, a calloused Christian. They can be worse than an unbeliever. The Bible says in Psalm 10 verse 4 that God is not even in the thoughts of the unbeliever, but he is in the hearts of even a calloused Christian. He might be grieved. He might feel quenched by their disobedience, but God won't give up. He's going to keep trying to reach and get a hold of their heart. It may take a total upheaval, everything turned upside down for them to see. But thank God he never leaves us like we are. One man wrote it this way, Lord, speak to us in any tone that's for our good. If it's good, God, tell me whatever you need to tell me. I found out that Joseph's brothers maybe represented his past and sometimes we can move on from our past and we can, we can focus on our future. But you know what? Our past can show up on our front door. But I love what the Bible says. Joseph remembered his dreams, not the pain. God had placed him in a position of authority. And yes, there were still some parts of the dream that need to be fulfilled. God always keeps his promises. He never lets his word come back without fulfilling its plan. I wondered if God might have reminded Joseph of those dreams day after day. You see, God wanted to restore the family and Joseph himself. 
pretty amazing when you look at Joseph and see the mercy and how he dealt with his brothers. Oh, I wondered how many of us might have reacted to see those who had treated us so harshly standing before us. Oh, he could have actually executed them or thrown them in prison. But he didn't forgive them immediately, I don't believe. I don't think he was acting impulsively. I think he took time to work through his own emotions. So let me give us some applications. Number one, God fulfilled his dreams to Joseph after 20 years. God's word never returns void. And if God has spoken something over you, he will bring it to pass. Number two, Joseph had to handle the power that God had given him. And how we handle the power that God places in our hand is very, very important. Power, influence, opportunity. And despite all the emotions of what may have happened in our past, we are never to harm our brother or our sister. We're never to try to get even with them. What we must do is use what God has given us to build them up, to bless them instead of burn them. I love what the Bible says that he knew his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. How sad that these guys didn't see the source of their supply. But even worse today is the ignorance of people in the world who don't know Christ as their personal Savior. The Bible says in John 1 and 10, He was in the world, the world was made by Him, but the world knew Him not. Christ the light, lighting up every human being's heart and mind. He came to the world for that reason. But the Bible says, all of mankind was still blind. If there had not been a self-disclosure of God through Christ, we would, re we would really never know the love of God. I love the fact that by chapter 45, Joseph can't refrain himself. His brothers have come back in. It's been a long, elaborate procedure. And he says, hey, I'm Joseph, your brother. Come here. Come close. Don't be worried. God has been working on you and in me. What a comfort to us today that Jesus knew us before the foundation of the world. And he came to reveal God to us. We don't have to be worried. We don't have to be afraid because God's been working all this time. He made sure that Christ took our place on the cross. And he made sure that you and I can hear the good news and we can trust him. So I want to close today in prayer. Lord, today there's someone who's waiting for you to fulfill a dream. And we know that you spoke it. Make it happen, Lord. And Lord, we know today that you're working on us to make sure that we use the influence and the power that we have to build people instead of tear them down. Work on us, Lord. But maybe today there may be someone who's listening to today's broadcast and they've been blind to who you really are. Let them come close and would you whisper to them, would you tell them about the great love that you have for them? Would you speak to their heart right now? In fact, I believe he's speaking to you this very moment. Would you give your heart to him? Would you come close? He'd love to do more for you, for you than you can even imagine. For these things, we give you thanks today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. And stay tuned so you can get more truth from God's word. Until we speak again, God bless you. 